All right. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. So, second day of field extensions. Um, what are we going to do? Welcome. So, uh, you know that um, if you take the real numbers and you take the polynomial x squared plus one, um, you know that there exists a field, there exists a field. Um, containing R, the field extension of R. Uh, such that X root plus one has a root. Uh, you've known this for a very long time now, probably. It's the complex numbers. Um, maybe even you know that if I write x squared plus three, um, I don't know, a lot of polynomials um, will give you an extension that where there's a root. They happen to all be the same extension. They happen to all be the complex numbers. Um, if you look at the, um, the field with two elements, We showed on Monday that there exists a field, uh, a field extension of Z2 containing a root. Um, and I guess we call this F4 because it's a F4 field and it has four elements. So um, the takeaway today is that there's nothing, there's nothing special. There's nothing special about the complex numbers in this, in this sense. I mean, complex numbers are special in a lot of ways, um, but really any field in any polynomial, you can find somewhere where there's a root. Um, So you take any uh, polynomial that is not constant because constant polynomials, you can never expect to have roots unless they're zero. Um, There exists an extension such that F has a root. So according to the book, this is due to Kronecker. Um, and that's what we're going to prove today. So, um, and I really, I really like this theorem. It's one of my favorite theorems, really. Um, especially, you know, when I learned this back in the 1760s, I, I had no clue that there was that this thing you do with the complex numbers is just not special at all. You could do it with any polynomial and any field. Uh, you take the rationals any polynomial there and, and look at what root you at. You could take finite fields and do do this to them. <clears throat> you could take uh, fields of rational functions. Right. So let's go prove this. Um, 
so uh, we're gonna do what we did um, what we did on Monday. Essentially, it's the same the same idea. So, um, so what was that? Does anyone remember? Start with uh, an injective homomorphism. I don't know if it's a good starting point, but that's just what I remember class starting off with. <laughs> oh, well, that's not we. That's not where we started. That's I mean we we got injective homomorphism. At some point, we need to get injective homomorphism from F to E, but to have that, we need to find E first. So. Um, Don't you just add an element which um, gives you a solution to that polynomial? Is that what we did with the alpha last time? That is we, pretty much what we did, but um, if, if I just say, the thing is, if I just go, so this is, this is, um, this could work, but it's, meh. It's very it's very complicated to make it work. Something like this, and then define addition and multiplication so that f of alpha equals zero. Um, the thing the thing the problem with doing this is that you you need to be very careful to to get a field, so so one problem is I need to check uh, the nine things that a field need, needs to satisfy, nine or 10, I forget. Um, another problem is I need to add, I need to add more elements. Um, for example, yesterday we added alpha plus one to there, um, but probably we need to, you know, we need to add all sorts of things given by the all sorts of things you get that by multiplying and adding these things, and then you you run into questions like is alpha cubed plus one could it be alpha squared minus alpha, you know? So uh, yesterday for four elements, it was, this was sort of doable. We could figure this out, but just trying to add an element and well, it's just, um, it doesn't quite work. Um, I mean, it's gonna work because we're gonna prove that it works, but we need to figure out like an organized way to do this because otherwise we're just like trying to list all the elements. We don't know when we listed an element twice. Um, so this is this is very painful. Do you look at a, a field of fractions? Like you assume that the field F is a PID and then you find some uh, polynomial that's irreducible in, in that PID and then you divide F by that. So it's like a quotient, quotient field. Yes, it's what you said, but you did it with the um, with the polynomial ring. So, um, so yes, uh, right. Um, John and Tiago got a bonus point. Uh, so, so a place to find fields. So the field, the field is a PID. Fields only have one proper ideal, which is zero, and zero is principal. Uh, but it's not very interesting. But if you take the polynomial ring over F and you quotient by a maximal ideal, uh, 
um, this is always a field. So that's one one thing we know. And ideally, if maximal, exactly when the quotient is a field. Um, and the other thing we know is that f is maximal if and only if f is reducible. So if I find an irreducible polynomial um, and I and I quotient but by that ideal, that is gonna give me that is actually gonna give me the field at once. Uh, so it's our knowledge of polynomials that's coming to the rescue. So the F so in the theorem is not irreducible. Uh, so think about what we're trying to, what we should do about this. Well, I copy a theorem again. So how can we go around this problem? Um, if the if the polynomial is not irreducible, modding out by it is not going to give me a field. It's not going to give me an integral domain even. What do you mean by f is in the uh, field of polynomials but not in f? I mean, it's not a constant. As in, like it's oh, okay, right, yeah. So, um, say we have this reducible polynomial. Uh, how could I try to get a, an irreducible polynomial from it um, where I'm trying to find a root. Uh, so I'm trying to find a root for f. So how can I reduce this problem to instead finding a root for some irreducible polynomial? Your extension would be the reals since it contains the rationals. And then you have. Um, plus minus root two and root three, which are in that field. Right, that is definitely the answer. Um, so, the, okay, so so the, in the reals, in the reals, there's a, there's a solution. So, uh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let me just change the question so that you don't already know the answer. So I have the field, so the field is, just the field of rational functions in two in two letters and the and I want to look for x. So this is still a reducible polynomial and and no real number uh, plugging in for x is going to give me is going to give me zero there. Really, I'm looking for the square root of y or the square root of z, which are not. So remember, this is rational functions. And the rational function is a quotient of polynomials, but no quotient of polynomials is the square root of y. So, um, so how do I go from 
looking at an irreducible polynomial to looking at a reducible one. Sort of the other way around. Can you just reduce it and then look at the reduced parts? So what do I do with the with the factors? Uh, well, you can like you can define a second one. Say like I don't know g of x. That's just x squared minus y. And look for a root of that. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I wanted you to say. Yes. Um, all right, you get a point. So um, if f is reducible, just replace it with an irreducible factor. Um, so let's just, I don't know, call it G. So G of X divides F. If G has a root alpha, then F of alpha will, will also be zero. So if I want to find, if I have this polynomial here that I want to find a root for, just find a root for one of the factors and that's, that's good enough. So from now on, we can assume that F is irreducible. And if it's not, just pick one of the factors. All right, are there any questions before I turn the page? All right. So just this is just the same theorem again. Uh, if you have a polynomial, there's an extension that has a root in it. And F is a field. Uh, okay, so let F be irreducible. Then the ideal it generates F. is maximal. Uh, we, we know this. We know that any ideal containing it would be would have to be generated by a divisor, but it has no divisors other than the trivial one. Uh, so the ideal is maximal. And if you quotient by a maximal ideal, and I'm going to call this quotient ring E is a field. <clears throat> so, so there's a field. Um, and the elements, just because it's a quotient ring, um, I mean, they're, they're classes, right? So they're equivalence classes. So maybe I, I write them like this. Uh, the equivalent classes modulo the ideal. Just like when you 
approaching modulo seven, every time you see a, a seven is just a zero. Here, every time you see an F is just a zero. So, uh, well, we already know that it's a field, which I, I really like that we did this because we didn't check that multiplication is associative and that kind of horrible computations. Um, it was just automatic by being a quotient ring. So um, I need to show now that F contains E. F is contained in E, sorry. <clears throat> So, um, so how is, where is, where, where is the field, uh, the original field F inside of these equivalence classes? It's the equivalence class with zero. Say it again. The equivalence class with zero. The equivalence class with zero? Well, that, that's just zero, but, um, yeah, wait. Um... But what is the equivalence plus? What, what, where is three in here? You know, if you take, if you're here, if you're, if you're inventing the complex numbers, where are the reals inside of the complex numbers? Um, if you think of them this way. So the reals are kind of, they're just polynomials in I, the, the complex numbers are polynomials in I. Um, now, um, how do you know if a polynomial in I is a real number? If it doesn't have an imaginary part? Yeah, so that is the answer. So um, the stuff where the, the imaginary part is zero, those are the real numbers. Uh, so, so that was just an example. Um, now the question is how does this fit in in a in a random field you have you know basically your elements now look like this and the question is when is this in the field What is the imaginary parts here? Um, so will the the uh, the real numbers just be the remainder? The remainder? Uh, the, what what do you? It, it is the it is the remainder. Wait, well, I'm no. just thinking that like if the remainder is zero, then. Um, What, like what are you dividing by to get a remainder? Isn't it the equivalence class of f of x that you're, which so, is not in the original field, but it's in the extension field? Okay, but I'm asking when do you get an actual real number there, right? So, um, what should I say? I don't know, I feel like we're, we're getting confused here. What, what I'm trying to say is that uh, constant polynomials um, form a copy of F, or more precisely, um, if I look at If I look at uh, this is an injective 
homomorphism. So um, you have A, and here you have the constant polynomial A. <clears throat> so if you look at the example of the reals, uh, adding the adding I, you can think of them as polynomials in I and being real. is the same as um, having degree zero. So um, I'm trying to say it's the constant polynomials. Uh, and if you, if you think about the complex numbers, they're sort of like polynomials or polynomials of degree at most one, because whenever you see a nice square, that's just degree zero. That's just a negative one again. So you have polynomials of degree zero and one. If you only look at the polynomials of degree zero, that's when you get back the real numbers. Um, if, if f happens to have degree three, what you would have would be polynomials of degree zero, one, and two. But if you only look at polynomials of degree zero, you would get, um, you would get back the, the constants. So let me do an example, um, another example. Q and you add the cubic root of two. So this is when you take um, you take the polynomial ring and you quotient by x cubed minus two, which is irreducible by Eisenstein's criterion. Um, so elements so. Elements are polynomials in in the variable cube root of two. So something like this, but when you have a cubic root of two cubed, that's that's just one. That is just uh, two. So when, what you have is that, when is this a, when is this a, a rational number? Uh, this is a rational number. Well, when B and C are zero, right? Exact, that's exactly when. Um, So in a sense, um, this is like the imaginary part. I mean, nobody calls it that, but it's like the imaginary part is in that those are the, the extra things we were adding that weren't there before. I should call this rational part. And this is the part that is actually a rational number. Okay, so, um, okay. Any questions? So I was saying that if you just look at constant polynomials, this is a ring homomorphism. So to be a ring homomorphism, you need to show that uh, adding and multiplying is the same on both sides and one goes to one. And this is, um, this is pretty clear. Um, so, 
sales results, if you, if you look at the book, it just, um, it just does it. Oh, oh my God, my computer is 96 degrees. Is it even working? So the book just goes through and does it. Um, if I'm still there, I seem to be still there. 88 degrees. That, that's Celsius. Oof. It's going to explode. Um, but I can give you another reason why it's a homomorphism other than just writing phi of A plus V and seeing that it's phi of A plus V. Um, so you take a you take a, a polynomial and you embed it as constants. This is a homomorphism. And if you go here, if you take a polynomial and you see it mod f of x. That is also a homomorphism. And these, these are both things we know, right? The, that uh, there's a homomorphism from any ring to its polynomial ring as constants. So we're just I'm just saying that you add and multiply constant polynomials the same way you add and multiply numbers. We know that. And for any ring, the map to the quotient where you just send everything to its class is a homomorphism. Uh, and when you compose the homomorphisms, you get a homomorphism. So that is the laziest way I know of showing this. And to show that this is injective, that it's in there. Um, so given that F is a field, how can I show that? Phi is injective in the laziest way possible. So to show that a homomorphism is injective, I need to show that the kernel is zero. Um, you can say that the the kernel is an ideal of f, and the only ideals in a field are zero and f. Um, exactly, exactly. Yeah, thank you, Mason. I was worried, honestly, with my computer melting. I thought I was disconnected. All right. Um, the kernel. The kernel is an ideal where right, it's not going to fit. This is injective. The kernel is an ideal. F is a field. So either the kernel is zero or it's everything. Um, 
but it's not everything. Um, because one doesn't go to zero. If P of one was zero, that would mean that zero is one plus f of x. And how could this be? How could, how could the class of, of zero be the class of one? I mean, it, it can't be, right? If you, it would just be zero is equal to one, which is obvious contradiction. I don't know. I mean, but could it be that they're equal modulo f is the question. I mean, zero, only one oh, ring oh, has zero equal okay. to one and it is a zero ring. Uh, so if, if two things are equal modulo f, that means that f divides their difference. Or if something is zero, that means that f has to divide one. Yeah, that would mean that f is constant. And we said that f is not constant. If you try to add a, a root to a constant polynomial, you're obviously going to run into, into trouble with the loss of algebra. All right. So, Indeed, E contains F. So we've shown that E is a field and that F is contained in E. Uh, all that's left is to show that there is some element in E that is a root of, of the polynomial. So what is this element? This is just any element that has degree zero, like you said earlier. Um, like a constant? No, uh, a constant, for example. So, so let's go back to the complex numbers. Um, if we're looking for, we're, we're here. We have things that look like this. Um, so I'm asking for which a plus bx squared is a plus bx squared equals to negative one. So if you take something of degree zero, you're not going to have, you're not going to get a negative number because a is a real number. So what do I take instead? If I think of a plus bx, what other best choice of something in there uh, can there be that will have that, that will square to negative one? What is the thing we added um, to to this polynomial ring to this field? Right. So 
if I only look at A, that's what we already have. This, this, this is new stuff. So here, for example, the square root of negative one is going to be x. x squared is negative one. Um, x squared modulo of this ideal is the same thing as negative one. So here, well, i equals x. I'm not calling it alpha because we have a we already have a letter for the root of negative one. But the special element we're adding is x in this case. So what what should we guess that it is in in general? Out of all the polynomials. Degree one polynomial. Degree one polynomial. Why don't we just say x? Uh, because it, 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 it's going to be x. Um, so let's say that alpha is the class of x. So the question is, what is f of alpha? Well, um, I could do this, I and mean, if I'm careful, I would say that f of x is a zero, a one x, blah, blah, blah. So f of alpha is a zero. Plus a one alpha. I'm adding all these classes, right? But you know that the way to add things in a quotient ring is to add in the original ring and then just take the, the class. Oh, sorry, it said alpha was a class of x. So a1 alpha is a class of a1 x. So what I have is Basically, I have the class of f of x. So can I simplify the class of f of x modulo the ideal generated by f of x? It's just a zero plus it's just zero. Yes. So f of alpha is zero. And what? So I mean, essentially, what this proof? So we're done. Um, what this proof was, was really what Tiago suggested at the very beginning, just sticking an alpha in there or the X in the polynomial ring, ensuring that this relation is satisfied by quotienting by the right ideal and, and just making sure that we still get a field. Um, but the, the thing is, if you don't use the machinery that we already have, it gets, it gets tricky. Um, all right, well, that's the theorem. Are there any questions? Just a side question, not really super related, but um, I just wanted to remember, uh, what's the, um, I forgot the word, uh, a degree zero polynomial, well, there's no, the zero polynomial doesn't that have like characteristic or degree, whatever negative infinity is at the convention? Yeah, it's not super important. That, yeah, no, I just, the, it, I just remembered that or I just wanted to make sure I had the right. I know it's not really related, but that's just my question. I mean, some people will tell you the degree is negative one or something. So I would be like, if you try to communicate with someone, I would be careful to about what the degree of zero is because people might not agree, you know.
Okay. Um, so so every any polynomial has a field extension where it has a root. Um, so now that we know that, um, it's um, I can tell you how to well. Now we know how to do it. Um, I can tell you how to compute with it. Um, so, for example, let, let's stick with the other example. Q adjoin cubic root of two. Um, So let's say um, let's say like before that alpha is the class of x. So the elements are things like the rational number and some other rational number and times cubic root of two alpha. Sorry, there are polynomials in alpha. Uh, of degree two or less, um, and you can you can do operations by just replacing alpha cubed by two every time you see it. So, for example, you wanted to multiply alpha squared by by this, well, uh, pretty easy. I guess I did choose maybe a very easy polynomial. Um, so alpha to the fourth is gonna be alpha cubed times alpha. So that's an extra two. And that, and once you do that, you go back to the same form of a polynomial of degree two in alpha. Uh, yeah, I'll do more examples on Monday. So Friday, Friday was supposed to be uh, off, and then the university decided to make up the day of uh, the hurricane day um, on Friday. But I'm not going. I'm not going to have synchronous class on Friday. So I'm gonna record uh, some stuff. If you if you have something you know like some problem you'd like me to work through or anything, you can let me know and I'll make a video on that. And you'll see me on Friday, but I'll see you on Monday. And and that's it.